Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. This is Ryan. This is <laughs> the <Flaric>. coffee sipping <laughs> Flaric. <laughs> this is the uh, energy drink sipping Jake. Mac, are you mm. sipping? Oh, indeed. I am sipping uh, some lovely tea through my oh, yeah. Shakespearean mug. Pink We're all up. sipping this morning. That's right. <laughs> And we are sipping on the <laughs> not to midway episode. Oh, we God. are through day eight. So if you are not caught up through day eight of the Ba Show, please pause the podcast right now. Catch up on all of the first week of uh, interesting action, we'll call it, and then resume the podcast and listen to us. We want you along for the ride. Uh, can I just say that this first week of the Ba Show has been about as good as our opening bit today? Yeah, no, yeah, that's appropriate. Very, very low bar that both of those have set. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, before we dive into the first week of action in this Ba Show, we have to give a compliment to all of our uh, continuing patrons, but especially to Zoo Claw. You are like a human sunshine dispenser, but with an extra sprinkle of glitter and a side of hilarity. Your mere presence has the power to turn even the gloomiest of days into a comedy show, leaving everyone around you in stitches of laughter. You're like a walking meme generator, spreading joy and chuckles wherever you roam. If laughter is the best medicine, then you're the ultimate cure-all with a dosage of humor that's just what the doctor ordered for anyone feeling down. Keep shining bright Right and keeping the world in stitches. So apparently, if you tell ChatGBT to give you a heartfelt <laughs> but funny compliment, is compliment somebody on their humor. It apparently. just repeatedly <laughs> says heartfelt and says funny over and over yeah. again. That was the most AI sounding response I've ever heard. No <laughs> Absolutely, kidding. but still good. I mean, I'm not arguing. The machines, <laughs> the machines have a long way to go before we have to really worry. I think, <laughs> but but that absolutely bears 100% true for all of our patrons, but especially Zooclaw. Like it might have been AI generated, but it was so right. If I know Zooclaw, <laughs> and I we don't do very well personally, <laughs> but. <laughs> that's exactly how i would describe them yes all right jake i'm a sumo update where are we at oh right um as always sumo411.com will tell you where and when you can participate in amateur sumo uh we have nationals coming up on june 1st in san diego and finally because this is like pulling teeth every time you work with a greater organization uh, the Grand Rapids tournament, uh, JFAX, has been finalized for June 22nd. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, get on up there for that. Uh, but most importantly, Iowa Sumo. We finally got a, our first demo, and I've talked about it here and there. But that's coming up on uh, May 25th, so uh, six days from today, this coming Saturday, in Des Moines. Look up Celebration, spelled exactly how that pun should be spelled, uh, hosted by the um, uh, the... Uh, local Japanese cultural society. Uh, they put on this big festival here in Des Moines and Iowa Sumo Club gets some time on the main stage to show off our sumo. Got a couple people coming. I think we got somebody from Omaha, Minneapolis, uh, a guy, maybe two from Chicago are coming out. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of a demo. And then we got some space in the park to just do sumo as long as we want to that day. So it'll be awesome. And that event is put on by the Iowa Asian Alliance. I wasn't positive, and I had already closed the tab, so thank you for bringing that up. Yep. The Iowa Asian <laughs> Alliance hosts Celebration. That is the name of the festival. Uh, it'll be downtown Des Moines on May 25th. Yeah, even without the Iowa Sumo Club demo, which I will stop by to check out, I will not be participating in, uh, because I am going to be going around to all of the... Why is this news to the rest of your teammates today? Because <laughs> I, I never <laughs> once said I was going to. Uh, uh, because me and my wife, as we do every year, are going to be going around sampling all of the amazing food <laughs> that is there. Well, if you are at the demo, I will call you out by name from the stage. So that's that's fair. That's fine. I I accept my fate. <laughs> I have earned it. <laughs> so typically on these midway episodes, we start by breaking down the U show race, but we we just need to stop down and ask one very important question before we get there. And that question is what the hell? Especially to the Sanyaku <laughs> ranks. Let's let's just break down day one. What is Sanyaku? 
Uh, it's something three something. <laughs> it's like three ranks or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then they went and added Yokozuna, but they never changed it to four ranks. They just kept it as Sanyaku. Because yeah, we like yeah, it that not, way. It's not Yonyaku. That doesn't sound as good. No. Mm. So day one, we, we start the Basho off. We knew this coming in. Asanoyama, Koma, one of our Komosubi, out injured. He's Kyujo, not participating. And then our we get into our Sekiwake matches. We have Abi losing to Tobizaru. It's Abi, not a shock. And we have Wakamoto Haru looking to losing to Takayasu. Takayasu's looking good. Also, not a huge shocker for Takayasu to do that. Then at Ozeki, we get Kirishima absolutely blasted out of the dohyo by Gonoyama. Uh, kind of a sign of things to come, unfortunately, for Kirishima this basho. We had Takakesho getting blasted out by Hira Doumi. A sign of things to come for Takakesho as he, uh, on day two, dipped out and said, nah, I'm done. Uh, Koto Zakura, I think this was probably one of the bigger shocks, got beaten by Daesho as well on day one. And then Hoshoryu looking to get the first win for the Sanyaku ranks. He loses to Atami Fuji. So we had six Sanyaku matches zero wins with one Kyujo. And then we get to the final match of the day. We have Yokozuna, Teru no Fuji versus Komosubi, Ono Sato. So we're guaranteed to get one Sanyaku win. It has to happen, yeah. <laughs> but it's not going to go to the Yokozuna as Komosubi, Ono Sato defeats Yokozuna, Teru no Fuji. And Teru no Fuji would do exactly the same thing as Takakesha. So it's all right. I'm not feeling it this Basho. I'm out of here. <laughs> too. Out. I, don't, I don't need two days to know that I ain't right right now. Now. Uh, so he <laughs> left as well. So after day one, the highest ranked Rikshi with a win was Komosubi Onosato, who is just this Basho starting his second year in Grand Sumo. This is his seventh Basho ever, and he was the highest ranked Rikshi with a win after day one. And now he's got a baby Chon Mage. It's and cute. now he's got a baby Mage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I believe this is the first time ever. That the highest ranked Rikshi with a win after day one uh, was a Komosubi. I think it ties for the most Sanyaku losses on day one. Uh, but for those other times where uh, seven losses in the Sanyaku on day one occurred, there were more Rikshi competing in the Sanyaku. So there was a higher ranked Rikshi that had a win leaving that day. It wasn't everybody but one had a win. And that one person was forced to get a win because they were fighting another Sanyaku Rikshi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you and do me a quick nerd favor and tell me how you searched that? Uh, I'm super curious how you how you made that query on, uh, uh, on so... Sumo DB, I assume. Sumo DB, I think I did bout query because then you can search based on a specific day. Uh, went to Maku Uchi. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head. It, it always takes me a couple seconds to th fully think through my process of how I'm going to search something. Fair I enough. think it was in the bout query because I don't think you can search by specific days in the uh, uh, other query did you uh, just search for like day one komosubi day one sekiwake or something like that I, I searched by like losses from yokozuna ozeki sekiwake after day one and then uh grouped it by basho so that it would just give me the number of total losses so i think that's how i did it all right that's very intriguing there all yeah, right I'm very good. intriguing <laughs> Thank stuff you. for all of our podcast <laughs> listeners there um so yeah so that that was the first what the hell Sanyaku ranks. And then Kyujo Mania started, as I mentioned, day two. Teru no Fuji pulls Kyujo out. Kyujo Mania. <laughs> no, Kyujo literally. Kyujo Mania. Yeah. Kyujo Mania. Teru no Fuji Continue. pulls out due to his continuing knee and hip issues. Takakesha pulls out due to his continuing neck issues. Then days three through five or three through six, no more Kyujos, not a whole lot of inspiring performances, uh, but day seven, we get two more Sanyaku Rikshi pulling out. Kirishima does pull out after a one and five start due to his continuing neck issues. And Wakamoto Haru pulls out after a three and three start due to a toe injury that he received in his day six loss. So the fallout from all of this. Asanoyama being huge of the entire Basho, as long as he doesn't come back, because he likes to come back in the middle to try to save <laughs> uh, the drop a little bit. But if he does not come back, he'll he's going to drop down to like Maegashira 10 to 12-ish. If Wakamoto Haru doesn't come back after having what would effectively be a 3 and 12 record, he'll probably drop down to Maegashira 5 to 9, which will be the lowest he's been in a couple of years. If Kirishima 
Well, we know Kirishima's not coming back. Yeah, no uh, he is going to be dropping to the Sekiwake rank after one full year as an Ozeki and need 10 wins in July to regain his Ozeki rank. And if he doesn't, he's got to do it the hard way all over again. Uh, Takakesho is going to be Kadoban for the ninth time in his career. And Terano, Terano Fuji's going to be fine. Uh, but he might start to get some angry rumblings <laughs> from the YDC after poor showings in two consecutive Basho. So what do we have left in the Sanyaku? We do have two Ozeki. We've got Hoshoryu, Kotozakura. We've got one Sekiwake and Abi, and we have one Komosubi and Ono Sato. That is it. We've got four Sanyaku Rikshi <laughs> left this Basho when we should have four Ozeki. That's it. Like, we should at least have four Ozeki and then everybody else. But no, we just have four total. Jake. This is a very disheartening first week because I was pretty sure after January, we declared that we were past this kind of Basho. We had cemented our top Ozeki ranks. They were dominating. I thought we were past this, Jake. What's going on? <laughs> I am going to pretend we didn't declare that because <laughs> there is no excuse otherwise. <laughs> no, I don't know. There, it's it's such a bummer. It, like Logically, it has to be coincidence. But it's a massive bummer of a coincidence. Mm. It is such a pain. Um, especially because, like, I, I mean, obviously we're going to get into the Yusho race here, but, like, Ono Sato's doing great. Mm -hmm. And I want him to do great, and I I am excited for how well he's doing. But if he wins this Basho, yes, it'll still be historic, almost to the level of Takara Fuji winning. But, like... There's a big old asterisk on this one. <laughs> well, for Ono Sato, actually, he would only have missed out on Takakesho and Asanoyama. Because I he feel did... like this is still going to be remembered as like the one where all the top guys pulled out. So, like, yeah, I, I know you're right. Fuji Day one. I know, but like, is that really like the? I don't know how much stock I put into that win. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I feel do like agree with I that. don't know. Like, I, I looking at like that I... match. Yeah. Looking at that matchup, like I, I get that Terran and Fuji is definitely kind of hurt, but I think Onosato will have given him a run for the money. Well, that's mm -hmm. the thing. I I think that yes, he has faced a lot of tough guys. Um, he, his schedule going forwards looks pretty good. He's faced pretty much everybody above him, not everybody, but pretty much. Um, so like I I think he's got a very real shot at the U show, but it's really hard to separate that from the idea of there being four out of nine Sanyaku guys remaining in the Basho. It's tough. It sucks. And, and mm. it's, it reminds me of Ichinojo's Yu show where like it was basically an endurance test to see who could not catch COVID that year. Um, <laughs> this one feels similar. Like it's, it's going to be one that like, even if it is pretty legit, it doesn't feel a hundred percent legit. Um, so that, and and I only bring up Ono Sato just because he's the one that I want to win the most. But, you know, there's plenty of other guys still in the hunt that would have an asterisk on their Yusho, I feel like, to some level. I don't know. It really bums me out. And yeah, this this Basho is just kind of just kind of sucks. It just kind of feels bad. <laughs> and I hate that. Yeah, because on, on top of the depleted Sanyaku ranks, like. Takedu Fuji, as we suspected on the yeah. preview episode, he's not competing at all. So, like, the follow up to the most historic Yu show win in a century is the guy's Man, not hurt. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of disappointment surrounding that, but I, I do tend to look on the positive side of things. And I do think, like, it, it might be a weekend Sanyaku field. And it might have been a week in Tanner no Fuji that he beat after day one, but I am all aboard 20 plus you show Ono Sato at this point. Like who's going to, who's <laughs> going to stop him? Who's going to stop him at this point? Like I'm, I'm fully aboard Ono Sato Ozeki by the end of the year. Like he's going to have Natsu, Nagoya and Aki. And in Kyushu, he's going to be Ozeki. Like who's going to stop this guy? Oh my goodness. Fair. That baby Chamange is really turn a leaf for you with him, <laughs> Ryan. All, all it like, I mean, he debuted 11 wins, 11 wins, but they're in the Maiga Shira ranks. And once you're up in the Sanyaku and you're still pulling off these kinds of performances, you're still improving. You're still in your seventh Basho ever. Ever. <laughs> and 
you're you still it, he's so big he's so dominating most of the time like i just as Quicker long as he, he stays too. yeah yeah as no, long he's quick as, that that jump move he had against Daisha today was oh, so good <laughs> so beautiful one of the best olays we've had in years yes um, i literally wrote olay in my notes yeah uh so yeah i i i'm all aboard the ono sato hype train at this point i think he has everything you would need in a sumo wrestler and he's kind of in a weakened field at this point in time so i don't know i'm all aboard the ono sato hype train and so i apologize when he rips his kneecap off tomorrow oh god <laughs> as is tradition yeah, yeah. haku oho takero fuji ono sato is like the the last of the 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 blue chip prospects here that hasn't mm-hmm. gotten hurt so far so ugh. i will also say i'm very iffy when it comes to ozeki hype trains like i was i was all aboard uh koto zakura uh, so that was that was a good win for me, but I was also all aboard Abby, and that was that was a very bad <laughs> showing for me. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it, you take, can't take take my opinion with a grain of salt. <laughs> you, you miss every shot you don't take. Is, yeah, exactly. is Ryan's philosophy right. for Ozeki? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that... Haru, not happening this time. <laughs> no, nope. no. Well, I've I've never been aboard the Wakamoto Haru Ozeki train, but oh really? Okay. No, not really. Hmm. I I think I think he's a good solid. Seki Wake, but I've never really seen a whole lot that makes me think he's going to throw it all together Fair for enough. three consecutive Basho. But that's mm. that's not midway talk. Uh, what's midway talk? Let's dive into the Yusha race. We've got two. <laughs> we're pretty deep in that already. No, yeah, we're there. Uh, we're two. We got two Rikshi tied atop the leaderboard at seven and one. We have the aforementioned Ono Sato uh, looking to pull off some history of his own. He sees Takedu Fuji. Oh. You've got uh, your first you show in 10 Basho. Let me try to do it in seven, buddy. Um, and then you also have not Takedu Fuji, but Takara Fuji also mm. sitting mm-hmm. miraculously at seven and one. Uh, so we'll start with Ono Sato here, <laughs> Flarek. He only has Hoshoryu and Abi left above him. Uh, as Rikshi ranked higher than him to face. So his other remaining five matches will be Rikshi that are ranked below him. I think in his career, he's lost to one, maybe two Maigashira, uh, twice to uh, Onosho and then to Takayasu. I, all of his other losses might be to Sanyaku Rikshi, but uh, <laughs> we'd have to go back and look at uh, the past two Basha's losses. But is Ono Sato... In his seventh Basho at Komosubi, the favorite to win this going into week two, Flarek. Oh, favorite. That's uh, Is he the favorite? You always add an interesting adjective to these questions or <laughs> wrinkle. <laughs> but I think I'm kind of with you on the hype train on this. He looks pretty damn good, doesn't he? Real real quick correction. He has lost to three Maigashira in his career. Two to Onosho, <laughs> one to Takeyasu, one to Takeru Fuji. There oh, you go. No show? You. Hmm. Okay, never mind. He's hot trash. Oh, no show. Oh, he no. hasn't faced yet this Basho. <laughs> uh oh. His kryptonite that, is still lurking. That is def- I feel like that's definitely going to happen. <laughs> He's also 0 2 against Hoshoryu so far. So we Oof. will have that Hoshoryu matchup as well. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, but no, he's uh, looking really good. Like, he, he re- honestly, when I watched this matchup against uh, Teru no Fuji, I realized how big this guy is. Like he, I looked like he was like a same size giant against like. Uh, finally, it was like someone comp, uh, comparable to ta- Takeru Fu- Teru no Fuji uh, during that matchup. <laughs> and I was like, hot oh, damn! And like once he had the chill mage, I was like, oh my goodness, this guy's a rikshi. He's, he's back. You know, he's good. He's no, he's no longer the young pup trying to get cheeky wins. He's like learning this game. Uh, yeah, I think he's got hair power. Yeah, he's got hair power. Yeah. <laughs> And I think there was one match I saw, like, I, I, I've always remembered when he first against uh, San, went against Sanyaki Rikshi, of where he, like, just got thrown. Like, he was, like, just off balance and got thrown a bunch. Yep. I think he, like, threw another, like, Sanyaki uh, Rikshi during one of his matches. He's uh, He's been doing a lot better job of making sure he's not getting thrown. I feel like this, the first two Basho we saw from Ono Sato, it was, I'm going to run forward as fast as I can and just push you out because I'm bigger and stronger than you. I feel mm-hmm. like his sumo's been a little bit more 
kind of like controlled and reined in and not just straightforward. It's like he's going for the belt grip. He's looking for some form of control more than just pushing you straight yeah. out in order to prevent like, all right, I got all my momentum going forward. And then Hoshoryu grabs my arm and throws me down. Mm, uh, yeah. So I think I think that little bit more control that he's ha- added this Basho has helped him out quite a bit. Yeah. He, he, I, he's wrestling more deliberately. I think yeah. it'd be the word I would use for that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's what I'm kind of picking up on. So and I think that's kind of that combined with like just the, his just immense size that he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's kind of giving me the belief that he's probably going to, uh, that he is probably the favorite. There might be uh Kota Zakura would be the one person I would say maybe, uh, but they already ma- faced off against each other and he beat him. So mm-hmm. it's going to be an uphill ball- battle for Kota Zakura. Go for ahead, sure. Jake. Um, I think that we're we're talking about Ono Sato kind of like maturing in his style of sumo there. Absolutely not the case for his Atami Fuji and Daisho matches. Both of those he got <laughs> super lucky. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think part of it is but you like need the... some of that to win a Yusho oh, regardless. Yeah. yeah, you need to have some of that like ring awareness and de- and uh, defense to be yeah. able to come back from bad situations. You're not. You're not going to win every Tachi eye. You're not going to be in the most advantageous position. But I do yes. agree, Jake. Yeah, he was not uh, dominating those matches that led to victory. It, mm. He was able to take advantage of mistakes by his opponent, which is something yeah. you're going to need. For sure. And, like, Atami Fuji had him absolutely dead to rights. And, yeah, his quickness and ring awareness bailed him out. Same with Daesho that uh, we already mentioned that one a little bit. But that slap down, he, like... That would look like a cartoon. He like straight up oh, yeah. wound up and like as he jumped to the side, like mm-hmm. Haymaker slapped him down. It was awesome. <laughs> it was yeah. a perfect read. He knew it was coming. But, he knew he was going to charge like, all right, here we go. <laughs> right. But what it shows is that he's got plans B and C ready to go. And it is definitely he, he's getting really good at plan A, but he still has like a couple other tricks available, yeah. mm-hmm. which I will point out. He is still starting his second year in Grand Sumo, and he's <laughs> able to do all of this stuff already against the top competition, as injured as they may be at this point in time. But still, it's not like he's facing a lower rank schedule. He's in the Sanyaku. He's facing all of the toughest competition. Yeah. And so, yeah, to Flarek's point, I think in my mind, he he – is the favorite to take it at this point, but there is still oh, seven days to go. Yeah. Well, just there's seven <laughs> days to go, but no, it, I, it took a little I'm, bit to get that out of you. Didn't it? <laughs> I, I, he's I worried. He doesn't want to jinx it. Doesn't want to jinx it. Yeah. I, I do believe Ono Sato uh, is the favorite to win at this point, yeah, but yeah. we have one more. We have Takata Fuji at seven <laughs> and one ranked my Gashira 16 maybe if he was ranked my Gashira 17 i'd believe a little bit more uh, <laughs> yeah, the 17 <laughs> mm-hmm. it's but, like entering the royal rumble at 30 like yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> i mean he's got all of these impressive wins against guys like Toki Hayate and Tomo Kaze and Mitoryu. Uh, actually, his only win against a Rikshi with a winning record right now is Ryuden. Um, yeah. But Mac, so 7-1 and one, Takeda Fuji down at Maegashira 16. Not, not exactly facing Ono Sato's schedule down there for Takeda Fuji. <laughs> no. Is there any chance that this is anything more serious than a fun w- first week story? Mm, I want to say yes. But I can't. <laughs> I, I and I like Takeda Fuji. I like I've I've enjoyed You've watching always him. Always like Takeda Fuji. Well, it's, uh, he's been a solid upper mid rank. He's got the perfect sculpted lower body. Seriously, we've talked about that for years now, and he's still showing <laughs> that he can do it. He can still show that he can do sumo. Good quality sumo, like today's match. Excellent show with the Shiko. Excellent balance. Came down to a mono e decision. Got reversed. It, it, it was great sumo. I. On, real quick on his match against Ryuden today, I didn't see a real good angle in the video I was watching. I'm assuming Ryuden's toes were out. That's what I heard. Yep, okay. his toes I'm were not out. sure I agree yeah. with it either. I don't. Well, I, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that none of the camera angles I sh- I saw made it clear because yeah. that looked like as clear a Torinoshi situation as I've ever well, seen. That's what I was expecting. And but since still. I think the the Kimarite was called Yorikiri, yeah, I don't it, wasn't, know about that one. it wasn't a yeah, no, they it called it a Yorikiri one. So I'm guessing like 
when Takada Fuji pushed Ryuden like up to the boundary, his toe yeah. must have slipped over. Mm-hmm. The match ends at that the, point. Mm, yeah, right. that was before the throw happened. So that's my guess of what happened, but I didn't see a clear angle. So that's, was, that's a bummer because like that that like both guys with one leg in the air going down at the same time beautiful. That was sick. is like the most that's like the most iconic sumo throw move ever and like exactly but technically it didn't happen because the match yeah. was over <laughs> but still uh, 30 37 years old still that flexible still showing that battle poise still showing that nope i've got this his sumo isn't fast but it's solid and he takes his time he figures out how his opponent's gonna work or what move they're gonna pull and he wins now where he's winning down on the bottom, <laughs> looking at his opponents. I'm like, well, he can take advantage of this, and that's great. I love seeing winning records from Takara Fuji. But I think if he continues like this, they're going to start ramping him up, as they always do for the lower mm-hmm. levels. And he's proven time and again he cannot get past M6 or M7. Now, granted, <laughs> the field is weakened at this point. But if he starts facing the Ozeki, if he starts facing the Komosubi again, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So no, I I want to say yes, he's a contender, but right now it's just a fun story for me, and so yeah. I'm I that's the train I'm on. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, those are our two Rikshi tied atop the lead, but we do have a group of five Rikshi that are one off the pace, starting with Ozeki Koto Zakura, who we all declared was the favorite coming into the Basho. So similar to Ono Sato, Koto Zakura has only two Sanyaku opponents left to face, and those are Hoshoryu and Abi. So Jake. Is the more proven Ozeki and Koto Zakura actually still the favorite to win this Yusho over the younger, greener Ono Sato? When you say more proven Ozeki, are you saying like more so than Hoshoryu? No, uh, more proven than Ono Sato. Like, okay, he's gotcha. been around, he has the Ozeki rank. Uh, he's been okay, in the I, top I division the for more than three Basho. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I get you there. Um, <laughs> I think, well, part of it is I picked him as my champ for our prediction series, but I I think I would slightly favor Koto Zakura here. He he has shown like um he, he's shown like extreme poise and patience and his sumo is looking phenomenal. Um yes, he did lose to Ono Sato. Um and who is his other one? Daesho, I think. Daesho. Yeah, both yeah. of those guys, seven and one and six and two right now. Yeah, so both of those, like, neither one's a bad loss by any means. Yeah, Daisho Ono just Sato, came off of a year straight at Sekiwake, so. Yeah, yeah, so, like, that's obviously not a bad loss, and, like, I guess other than, like, Hoshoryu, I'm not really afraid of anybody else for Koto Zakura, um, and, and, I mean, that's not necessarily different from Ono Sato, but, like, I, I just I just feel like the, the, the experience there has got to be worth something, and... Koto Zakura continuing to do his like the best uh Kisuno Sato impression I've ever seen is <laughs> is definitely working. Um I, I think that it, he's he obviously needs Ono Sato to pick up another loss, but I think with Ono Sato's level of experience and the fact that he's still getting away lucky on a couple of these, I I think that uh if I were to make the odds right now, I'd say it's like tiny, tiny bit I'd favor Koto Zakura. Not by much, but like him, Ono, Sato, Daesho are kind of the only three that I think are really in it. And of those three, Koto Zakura is my pick. Yeah, his uh, his Chomage is only tied together by a thread. That can come undone <laughs> at any second there. At any second, Ono Sato could be back to being a rookie. Exactly. <laughs> I have to say that uh, Koto Zakura's warm-up, like, I love Hogoda Fuji when he is psyching himself up, going nuts. But when Koto Zakura gives that crazy eye, like, have you ever yeah. noticed that? Like when he stands oh, up, yeah. he's like, ooh, like, oh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he like, definitely he definitely puts a big game face on because he looks a lot more intimidating than in that in that moment than like any other time right? that Koto Zakura. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That man's seen some things. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes Takayasu mode completely blank until he <laughs> yeah. leaves the ring. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, he has that like I'm super bored, like I'm super bored at the right now. Look, like mm. down pat that like, Takiyasu <laughs> yeah. has, like after he wins like a crazy match, he says like, "Oh, I guess I won the sumo thing." Yeah, oh. he'll like lift a 400 pound man bodily up and slam him on his head, and then just casually be like, "He's in line at the DMV," kind of a face. Yeah, I, 
it wasn't a like technical display or anything today in his match against Oho, but I did love his match against Oho because his strategy was I'm going to let Oho try to push me for about 20 to 30 seconds. He's not going to be able to, and then he's yeah. going to be really <laughs> tired and I'm just going to very easily push him out. But I love do you that think strategy. Oho, do you think Oho had the same strategy? Because I wrote that down. I was like, that was nothing but a shoving Supari match just back and forth. And it looked like Koto Zakro was still well, getting tired. I mean, that's that's Oho's style of sumo is like he doesn't go for the belt. He's going to try to push you if he can. He's going to try to pull you down like he did to Hoshoryu the day before. He caught Hoshoryu off balance, was able to pull him down. And I think Oho now has like five and three or like a four and two record against Hoshoryu, which is very oh, wow. funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think Koto Sakura knew, like, I don't have to worry about protecting my belt. I just got to worry about this guy who's not a Daisho level pusher thruster trying right. to push me around. I'm just going to use my size to my advantage. Just make sure he doesn't catch me off guard and pull me down. And then I'm going to wear him out and push him out. Yeah. O Oho has a big pushing game, but he doesn't have that same level of like murderous intensity that Daisho has. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and uh Koto Zakura, like I I've I already compared him to Kisuno Sato. You know, he's got that patience, he's got the size to allow the other person to like tire themselves out at their own game kind of deal. It looked like they were just sparring for a little while. Kinda. Yeah. It honestly <laughs> looked like uh, you know, like let's all right, there's a new guy at the sumo club. Let's, uh, yeah, let's put our big guy in there and just have him try pushing around to get a feel for sumo, right? And then, it, yeah, it's just kind of like, all right, okay, okay. All right, and now I think we're going to be done. So here you go. We're going to go to the edge, and all right. There we Same go. Same face, whole time. When you're over, yes. here we go. <laughs> all right, uh, let's talk about another one of the Rikshi. Jake mentioned him as one of the three favorites at this point, sitting at six and two, Maegashira one, Daesho at the exact rank that he was when he won his uh, career, his one U show that he has in his career back in 2021, or was it 2020? I don't remember when Daesho won. No, 2020 was Toku Shoryu, so I think 2021 was Daesho. Um, We've all forgotten. Yeah. 21. Uh, who? Thank you. Yeah. January 21. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Daesho, he's sitting at six and two. And unlike Ono Sato and Koto Zakura, he has fought all of his Sanyaku matches. There is nobody left for him to fight unless like Wakamoto Haru comes back. And he might have already fought Wakamoto Haru. He did already. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, Daesho's done. <laughs> Everybody he's going to fight from here on out is ranked lower than him. And he's only one back of the lead. Flarek. What are the odds? He might not be the favorite, but what are the odds we see Daesho take a second career you show here? I do not think we can discount Daesho right now. Yeah. Yeah, have you seen mm. that this guy do sumo this boss show? He's, He's hot been looking fire. Good. He's looking good. This is <laughs> the Daesho of old. Except when until, he whips against Ono Sato. Until he gets but... red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is that's he's just so eager to uh, get you show on that one. And uh <laughs> he got tricked by the dastardly Ono Sato who didn't just allow himself to be pushed off. That's on. That's on yeah. Ono Sato, not Daisho. <laughs> ono Sato cheating and bringing a little red flag to wave. The cameras didn't catch it, but I know it was yeah, there. Clearly not. <laughs> <in front of laughs> Daisho. But no, he's looking damn good. I am big. I. I. It's. I think it's. He still lost to his biggest rivals, so I can't say he's a favorite because he has to somehow make that up or wait for them to make a mistake and drop a match. But mm -hmm. he is. Like I, he's looking just really, really nice. This is the Daisho I thought it was going to make Ozeki, the type of sumo mm. I'm seeing from him this boss show. So, I say he is not the definitely not the favorite. But if uh, Ono Sato and uh, Koto Zakura drop a couple more matches, he's right in there. I definitely think so. All right, and then we have three other Rikshi that are tied with one win behind the the leaders in Maegashira 4, Ura, Maegashira 7, Mitake Yumi, and Maegashira 10, Shona Noumi. None of these guys are at the level of the other people that we've talked about, with the ex exception of Takeda Fuji. But, so, Mac, which of these other three Maegashira guys that are one back of the lead has the best chance to surprise us all and take the U show? This is a really unique group here, because you've got the wild card Ura, where you're like, no, he's just jovial he's happy to be there you want this guy to win even when he loses ah oh, okay yeah. you don't you're happy you just you're happy that ura is out there so it's like okay yeah i could see him winning i'd like to see him win then you've got mitaki yumi the kid that has broken our hearts 
for years now. <laughs> the Oze- the Ozaki that never was in this case, or I mean, he was barely Ozaki, was. I mean, there's a barely, barely. Anyway, but yeah. after his match Ugh. today, I'm a little worried about that leg. So I'm curious to see what he's going to do tomorrow. Or his head. Yeah, I think he was. It his head? He was I, limping really bad. I don't today. know. I. It it doesn't it didn't look good for me, Takiyumi, after that mm-hmm. match. He was very wobbly. I couldn't tell I thought he landed on his head coming off the doyo. It might have been a leg. I'm, I'm he sure. landed a wicked capoeira kick to the judge sitting at the ringside yeah, there. That was did. great. I, I think that was nice. Sato Gatake Oyakata is who he landed yeah. on top of. I <laughs> but still. think so. And then you've got Shodan Umi. Nice job, buddy. You keep doing you. I don't know very much about Shona Naomi. Like, yeah, good job, Shona Naomi. <laughs> so, this is the Shona Naomi that Jake was convinced he would always be like four or six months ago. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, to be fair, I let myself get sold on it by uh, the biggest Shona Naomi stand out there. Uh, yeah. Our our friend Jake was was big on him for sure, but he's looking pretty good now. He's um, yeah. I mean, he's kind of reviving a little bit of that prospect talk, I think, but like. Certainly not on the level of like the other big three that we talked about, um, you know, Ono Sato and them. But but yeah, I think he's he's kind of proven he's not like a complete wash. He he took some time to get used to the top division, and I think he's kind of kind of doing better now. But of yeah. these three, I think the wildest card is Uda. I think we would be happy if Uda won and he's wily enough that he might actually pull it off. I need to see a little bit more from Shona Naomi. I'll, I'll say for looking Ura, good too. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. For for Ura, I think if you take any single match in a vacuum, Ura always has a very good chance to win it. But if you put a bunch of matches together, Ura is like the least likely wrestler ever to be super consistent, in my opinion. <laughs> he's like, but that's what I think makes he's him too so much wild. of a wild card. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just, I and I love him for it, but there, I, there's no way he's winning a U show, right? Which means he is the best chance for it. He is primed for <laughs> Mac it. Mac has a point. <laughs> the person who think is the least likely. <laughs> it's like no matter who he faces, you're flipping a, a 60-40 coin. You know, he's always got a pretty good chance. Yeah. But he's got seven more matches to go. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. Enough weird stuff is going to happen. There's no chance, right? What go do ahead, you Claire. expect from this tournament? This tournament is weird. He had six uh, days in a row where he he got that coin flip. Six wins in a row, yeah. Jake. So now he's he going to looking... have four in a row where he loses, 60-40. No, <laughs> exactly. We'll except, except he has he... Taka No Show tomorrow. Taka, Taka No Show is looking really bad this podcast. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I so yeah, he's got one for sure. He's got yeah. one for sure. <laughs> yeah, he, but that's, he lost that's to the, thing, the though, two with... Ozeki, so I, but, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing with Ura. He could go against a guy that's doing terribly, and end up doing like a front flip into the crowd losing it, but like it'll be a great match. But I mean, come on, it's Ura. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why he'll be the Dark Horse I, winner. <laughs> I was gonna I wanted to say Mitakiyumi to this question, and then he goes out and loses to Shodai today. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and that was a scary fall. There there's a lot of falls fall. off the Dokyo this Basho, haven't there? Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm gonna correct you imminently. I don't remember who Mitaki Umi lost to, but it def- Shonan Umi is who Shonan Umi, not Shodai. Did, like, no. did Shodai beat him yesterday? Shodai Maybe beat I'm... him yesterday, yeah. Okay, yesterday. that's yeah. Um yeah, I, I watched both of those days today to catch up, so that's why they're running together for me. <laughs> but yeah, uh Mitaki Umi, like yeah, consistency used to be his biggest strength. He he would he would be like you know uh, flipping an eighty twenty coin uh, over and over again, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. Falling off the dojo, losing to Shodai, who's not doing very well. Like, I don't see any reason to think that Matakiyumi has a good chance. Shonan Naomi, like you said, he's he's you got to see more from him before you can truly believe. But still doing good, <laughs> good. But like. Yeah, I think there's effectively no chance that any of these three guys or Takara Fuji actually win the U show. Like, actually win it? Come on, please. <laughs> to Jake's point, Ura, this is this Basha was Ura's third ever six match winning streak in the top division. His long, longest winning streak ever was a seven match winning streak in his second top division Basho back <laughs> in May of 2017, where he did Ooh. finish 11 and four. Hmm. I think I I ultimately I'm not disagreeing with your point, Jake, that those three are they're not going to win the U show. But I am going to say 
of those, I think Ura is maybe a slight tier above of where it where maybe he can like sneak in a back door. <laughs> like if it gets to a thing like where everyone's tied at the end and comes down to a playoff, I feel like Ura's cheeky <laughs> yeah. enough too. That's what get, I like, mean. A couple He's wins in a wily, row. cheeky bastard. I, I think he could be part of like an eleven and four, or maybe even like ten and five batch of a ton of guys that get Junior Show this time around, or something. You know, like that's. I think that's, that's kind of Ura's ceiling. <laughs> that's just one way from a cheeky playoff win, a Junior Show. I, I'm <laughs> I just know, saying. Man. Yeah, I don't. Know. I agree. Saying I, I think he's like he's bringing in a little extra this boss show, and that's where I, I have a little bit of belief that he might be able to make some noise. Yeah, especially because like he's faced off against like a bunch of the upper Maegashira. He still has a bunch of them to go, but other than the two Ozeki that he's already fought, uh, Abi Ono Sato, yeah, he, he's not faced Ono Sato yet. So that's uh, about a sixty forty wild card <laughs> chance to win that one. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> but but no, I I think he still does have like most of his tougher competition ahead of him. So I think that's going to work against him. I don't know. Yeah. But yes, if you made me pick of the three, I, I guess I would say Ura, but like, I don't like it. I, I would pick Shonan <laughs> Naomi. Victory. Yeah. Let's go. I would pick Shonan Naomi, but like, it's not that like big of a difference between the three. No, it's, mostly it's like just a 34% Ura's competition. Versus... <laughs> like you said, Jake, Ura's competition's going to be harder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then but we Ura's do have... proven himself against the joy. Like he can get that 60-40 coin flip. Kind of. <laughs> not the same. <laughs> and like. Shonan Naomi. But, like, all these guys, if they do keep winning, they're going to have to have tougher competition. And, like, Takara Fuji is just, like, his only prayer is that the writers, like, had a typo or something. And they, <laughs> you know, they gave, they're they giving him Takara Fuji's Wait, story that's an line, E, right? right? Uh, wait, that's close no, enough. Just give that guy the that, U show, right? I, like, we, oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's the only situation where he could possibly, <laughs> you know, actually end up in the conversation. But, yeah, yeah these other three, I have, like, almost no no more hope than I do for Takara Fuji. All right, let's, let's move on from the, we spent far too much time talking about those three, Rikshi. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. let's, <laughs> let's spend a little bit less time on some of the Rikshi that are sitting at five and three, two wins back at this point. That is not out of the conversation to win the U show chief amongst them is Ozeki Hoshoryu, who is kind of falling into the same trappings that we always see from Hoshoryu. He's, still too inconsistent uh, to kind of consistently be a you show threat. Um, just, you just have to compare and contrast two of his matches, his one against Abby, which is the most perfect Abby match you will ever see where Hoshoryu goes in at the Tachi eye and Abby's hands like hit him perfectly right in the neck and immediately push Hoshoryu out like no competition in that match. And then you have his match against Gonoyama where he just bulldozes Gonoyama immediately out. So those two Hoshoryus are within a couple of days of each other. I, I feel like his inconsistency is still there. He needs to find a way to make the matches against like Gonoyama that he had against Ura that he had, where he's controlling the match dictating the flow of the match and winning it uh, to be a consistent Yusho threat. I think with the weekend Sanyaku field, he could definitely go on a run in week two and kind of be sneaky uh, in a threat. If Onosato were to drop a couple and Hushoryu takes one off of Koto Sakura down the line. Um, but yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on Hushoryu so far this Basho? Yeah. Inconsistency is the big one. Um, yeah. But but yeah, three losses. I, I don't know. Twelve and three is not a not a uh, an unattainable U show win, right? So it's not exactly. like he's completely out. But yeah, it does suck, especially in the early Basho. He just looked like crap. Mm. Uh, just I don't know. He's he's somebody that's still still on the young side, still developing and all that. But yeah, it's it's always a, a bummer to see him do so well and so poorly right back to back like that. Yeah. Uh, also sitting at five and three, our last Sanyaku Rikshi, Abi. Uh, he has benefited from two Fusen wins, still has yet to face Onosato, Koto Zakura. Are, are we treating Abi like any sort of guy that's going to go on a run and win this U show? He does have a U show in his past, which is the only reason I bring oh, him yeah. up in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Three and three in the ring, that. though. <laughs> yeah, three and three in the ring. And then he's got Fusen against, I believe, Wakamoto Haru and Takayasu. Yeah. I would, I would pick Daisho 
over Abby at this point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Daisha's just the better Abby, right? <laughs> this Basho. Yeah. They're not exactly yeah. the same around. style, but they're somewhat close. Like, you know, mm. who's who's the big power pusher who's who's on the leaderboard? Like, yeah, of course I'm gonna pick Daisha over Abby <laughs> at this point. <laughs> and then we do have a group of seven Maigashira. Uh, I, I think they all have no shot. I'm going to just list them off and then stop me when you say, yeah, this guy could go on a run and win the U show. Uh, <laughs> my Gashira five may say my Gashira eight Koto Shoho, my Gashira 10 Keen Bozon, my Gashira 11 Hokuto Fuji, my Gashira 13 Chura no Umi, my Gashira 14 Ryuden and my Gashira 14 Oshoma. You'll nope. notice you were not stopped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> I, I will say uh, Chura no Umi and uh, Oshoma are both impressing me as relative yes. newcomers. Uh, Oshoma, this is his very first one up here, yeah. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Chura no Umi has had a couple. But this yeah, they're both... Third or fourth. They're both doing all right. Good for them. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, they're they're on track for potentially getting, a, you know, like a special prize or something, you know, if they do really well. But like... Yep. That's that's the ceiling, at least, I think, for for where this Basho goes for him. Yeah. Um, let's move on out of the Yusha race. In addition to the Sanyaku injuries we had, um, we did have one more Kyujo that we haven't talked about, and that was on day three. Takayasu pulling out uh, after a flare up of his lower back issues that occurred during morning practice. This happened the day after he defeated Ono Sato, the only guy to have beaten Ono Sato, this Basho. It was two days, but Takayasu was looking good in those two days. Yeah, um, but he, he did. is <laughs> he is returning to the Torikumi on day nine. He is going to be facing Hoshoryu tomorrow. So we'll see. He's out of the Yusho race, but we'll see if he can go on a miracle run and salvage uh, Kachikoshi more than likely just coming in to get a couple more wins and uh, keep his fall down to Bods K not being yeah. too severe. He, he's the equivalent of two and six right now. Um, Hoshoryu mm -hmm. is obviously going to be a tough battle. He can only give away two more if he wants that Kachikoshi. So, mm -hmm. or he can only give away one more if he one wants more. to maintain a chance at a Kachikoshi. Yeah. Very tall order, but at, but I think he's, uh, he definitely has a good chance to stem his fall down the Bonds K. Yeah. My guess is he has Hoshoryu today probably Koto Zakura tomorrow because he's in the joy. So he needs to Oof, fight yeah. the Sanyaku Rikshi. So I have all like, order and then probably Abi the next day or something like that. But yeah, so Takeyasu, he's got his toughest matches in the next couple of days, I feel like. But yeah, if he can salvage like, you know, five or six wins or something by the end of this, you know, that would be somewhat of a victory to come through it injured, but still not completely trashing your record and your rank. Yeah. Um, anybody else we want to talk about here real quick? Um, Shodai's doing Shodai things again. He's three <laughs> and five and yet made Mitaki Yumi look like a fool, which I mean, Mitaki Yumi, like we already mentioned, we don't really think he has a shot at the Yusho race, but like he's six and two. And one of those two is Shodai. Yeah. Uh, like, like, <laughs> yeah. Shodai just, I, I don't, I just don't get this man. And and I had in my notes here that uh, uh, Oho comma new Shodai question mark because he's kind of doing the same thing. He's losing matches he should win and he's winning matches he should lose and he doesn't always seem like he's really got a plan. Yep. I don't know. Guys like this always confuse me, but Shodai like consistently has these like weird. I don't know. He he wrestles to the level of his opponent to some you know to some extent. Yeah. Mm. And and yeah, it's it's been notable this Basho, uh, especially the last like three, four days that Shodai is like deciding or maybe not deciding, maybe reacting to just whatever <laughs> is across the ring from him. And uh, I don't know, it's very strange and impossible to predict. Um, only other guy I wanted to mention, the other Rikshi making his uh, Makuuchi debut, Toki Hayate, sitting at three and five through the first week. Started off 0 and four, and he's gone three and one since then. So maybe kind of getting his footing a little bit. But I don't know. I kind of like Toki Hayate. He he's inoffensive to me, so I don't he's, mind if he's stuck <laughs> yeah. around. He, he hasn't he's done anything long side. enough. <laughs> yeah, he, he's on the smaller side too, which generally lends those guys to being more fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um and i've seen that so far but yeah i don't know we'll see jury's still definitely out in my opinion yep um let's talk about uh jurio i think the biggest story down there right now endo 
he he hasn't been to Jurio in 11 years, and he's trying to make sure <laughs> yeah. he doesn't lose in Jurio still for 11 years as he is 8-0 and down in Jurio. <laughs> wow. looking, looking like a new man uh, since he was booted down to the second tier yeah. division. I don't think Endo took that too kindly. <laughs> He is the only man in the entire tournament with eight wins so far. Jeez. Um, <laughs> and and even if he only gets one or two more, he is pretty pretty close to a lock to come back up to the top division. Yeah. There's four guys ahead of him on the Jurio Bonske, and only Bouchozan has a winning record of those four. Because that's what and we, we've seen Bouchozan on in the top <laughs> more division. Bouchozan. Yeah. We've seen enough Bouchozan to know that uh, that's not a huge threat. So. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, look look for Endo uh, in the top division again in the very next Basho here. Yep. Other big names down in Jurio. Mio Giryu is sitting at one and seven in his Oy! first Basho down in Jurio for a while. So yeah, Mio Giryu uh, not looking too good this Basho. Maybe if that if that continues, might be inching closer to retirement. Uh, Wakataka Kage is sitting at seven and one from jury of six. He is on pace. Should he keep up this pace through week two to make it back up into the top division next Basho. And then Haku Oho, he is three and five. He injured his right bicep on day two. Hasn't really been looking all that great since day two. Um, and then he did pull out uh, today. He was Kyujo. But there's reports that it was due to COVID and not due to the bicep injury. So we might see Haku Oho back yet this Basho. I'm not sure what their COVID protocols are anymore at this point. Yeah. One other guy for Jurio, uh, Ono Katsu. Um, oh, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm remembering right, he is the last guy to get that Makushita Tsukidashi ever. Yep. yep. Um, well, so, yeah. the Makushita Tsukidashi up at uh, Makushita 15. Now Makushita Tsukidashi is just down at the bottom of Makushita. Right, right. Sorry. So like the last guy to get that level, the, the old school style of... Uh, so he started his career because he was accomplished enough. They gave him... He went straight to Makushita 15. Um, and yeah, since then he went he went 5-2 and two there, then 6-1, and 5-2. And, and now in his Jurio debut... Uh, he is seven and one. He is still continuing to crush it, even with the higher level competition. That is definitely a name to watch for. Uh, if he continues this pace, he'll likely end up in the upper Jurio where he can potentially take one more. Uh, if, if he does well this tournament and does well in July, we might get to meet him in the top division in September. That'd be really cool. Hmm. Chiyomaru two and six, my boy. Yeah, <laughs> making me Aww. sad. He might be headed down to Makushita. Yeah. No. Has he? I think he was down in Makushita recently. Yeah, I uh, thought so. I thought he yeah, had a pretty. He good was streak, in Makushita he... in March, and so this was his uh, returning from Makushita this Basho. So yeah, Chiyomaru. That's right. Yeah. The last time he was in Makushita, though, was twenty twelve. Oh. So yeah, he's he's definitely he's definitely kind of over the hill and fighting to stay in those paid ranks. Yep. Uh, and then one final bit of news before we take a break. Koto Eiko has announced his retirement. He is in Thai, and he is going to be taking on the Kabu of Oguruma Oyakata and will reside at the Sado Gatake Beya, where obviously he uh, wrestled his whole career. I know Koto Eiko, he... He was like Kagayaki. He never had a single accolade to his name, never won a lower division <laughs> U show, never had a special prize, never got a Kimboshi, no June U show, anything like that. But we never flacked on Koto Eiko. No! And nope. there was a very good reason because Koto Eiko was so fun to watch in the ring yes. every single match. And so, yeah, Koto Eiko, uh, sad to see his retirement announced here today. He had a knee injury that just proved to be too much for him to recover from. He was uh he was up there almost with Ishiro when it comes to ripped little guys. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, pour one out. The uh the little thick boy club has lost another member. Yep. But I'm excited to see what he can do as an Oyakata. So I'm I'm looking forward to the future and hoping that he can put together a really strong Heya. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good good to see that he was able to get an elder stock so that he can yeah. continue in sumo the rest of his career. Definitely. All right, and with that, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with updates on the GSB winner's belt and the not very complicated to do at all GSB loser's belt that we're totally going to stick around yeah. after this Basho. 
If you enjoy the Grand Sumo Breakdown podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search for Grand Sumo Breakdown. Support the show on Patreon and check out our blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. Also, watch us on YouTube. So, our third iteration of the GSB winner's belt is uh, on its way up as... As as it does in the lower divisions here, as it literally um, has to in the bottom. It, it has divisions. no choice. Well, no, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, it does technically. Like, so so what happens with this mm-hmm. with this belt is when it makes its way through the lower divisions, it usually ends up uh, on somebody that goes seven and zero when it comes to the Jonah Kuchi, Joni Don, Sundan made division, because uh, those divisions are all kind of like just a filter that they they end the Basho with one guy at seven and zero generally. Um, so the GSB belt, uh, where the winner takes the belt from whoever they beat, uh, that, that belt usually cruises up through, uh, up into Makushta and it's working on it right now. Um, so let's see, it ended up on Chioga at the end of last Basho at Jonah Kuchi three. Um, and he ended that tournament well to move up to Joni Don five. Uh, so basically from the top of one division to the top of the next division, uh, however, he got beat by Taka Taisho, who got beat by Ryo Tsukasa. Uh, Ryo Tsukasa is undefeated right now uh, at 4-0, uh, which means that he is going to be part of this like final eliminator second week where this belt is almost assuredly going to end up on the winner of the Joni Don division and uh, thus get thrust into the upper Sundanmei ranks for next Basho. Now, it gets tougher and last the second iteration of the GSB belt made this very clear because it took like three years or whatever. Uh, that pattern will continue till the top of Makushta, at which point the promotion rules change a little bit and it gets, it's, it's very possible. It will end up at that Jurio barrier. Again, the barrier to get from Makushta into Jurio, not, uh, not as straightforward as the lower divisions. So we'll see what happens there. But for now, uh, it is safe to say that this belt is going to be moving well into Sandan May for next Basho. Unsurprising, but at the very least, I can say for certain it is going to be happening to some level. Now, the GSB losers belt. Are two Basho and two massive complications already. So this belt, <laughs> we decided to do the opposite. We said, okay, Terano Fuji, you're the Yokozuna. You have the GSB losers belt. And whoever... Uh, whoever loses to you will take that belt, and whoever loses to them will take the belt, and we'll see the belt theoretically move down, Go down. the ranks as the other belt moves up. And that's just not working, uh, <laughs> in part because the guys at the top keep losing. <laughs> and especially something that isn't a complication for the winner's belt, what happens when you go Kyujo <laughs> while you hold the belt, while you hold the loser's belt? Because if you go Kyujo, if you pull out of a tournament due to injury, that's a loss. So do you keep the belt and then the belt just sits on the bench with you? What if the guy retires in between Basho? It's, what do we do? It makes, it's stupid. It makes no sense. Last time in last Basho, Takakesho went Kyujo, but we kind of just ignored it because Kirishima had the belt and he took a Fusen win over Takakesho. So we're like, mm, no, mm. we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Kirishima, you still have the belt. Now, what happens if the guy who has the belt himself is the one who goes Kyujo, which just happened uh, a couple <laughs> days ago. Kirishima, yeah, Kirishima uh, won the belt from Atami Fuji uh, by losing to him and then lost a bunch more times and then went Kyujo. So technically the belt should sit on his waist as he recovers on the sidelines. So do we just pretend that that one didn't happen either and then like retroactively go back and put it back on Atami Fuji that day? That doesn't feel right no. either. And you can't he give would it to still Toby have the belt Zaru. to this day. Yeah, you can't give it to Toby Zaru, who that was the only other option. He he the Fusen win went to Toby Zaru, and so maybe that yeah. person just inherits the belt. That's the only the only two things that make sense are when somebody with the belt goes Kujo, you just pretend that they never got the belt. Or 
Uh, yeah. Or you have to give the loser's belt to somebody who got a win on their record. Yeah. And I hate all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm keeping track of like all these three, these three or four different timelines at the same time here. <laughs> We're going to see what happens <laughs> at the end of this Basho, but this might just have to be something that we put to bed because like, it's, it, it's, it, it's There's just no not clean. fun. You can't it's do not, it cleanly. No. Exactly. And it's not fun if it keeps depending on people getting injured or not. It's just, yeah. Just feels like a bummer. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But for, for the time being, I don't know. That's the best I got on that one. <laughs> yeah. Let's do just a real quick champ chump update from us. Uh, and the real quick version of that is Mac is going to win. Laric is going to lose. Pretty <laughs> much we need to lost. dive into it anymore. Uh, well, let's say everything. who they got to explain <laughs> why that's already such a lock. <laughs> yeah, Mac, who do you got? Why are you cruising to victory here? I am cruising to victory off of Ono Sato as my champ and Mitoru as my chump. Oh, yep. no. He's the only <laughs> oh, yes. guy that picked well for both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I start off with uh, uh, Kirishima as my champ, and that did not go well. And I think was down to two people. Uh, as you said, uh, Ryan, as when Kirishima went uh, Kujo that I could replace him with, it was either Tomokaze or Mitoryu. Yep. And the and reason for those were Flarek's <laughs> only two choices is because if your champ goes Kujo and you need to select a new champ, you don't get the benefit of being able to choose whoever you want. You have to choose somebody with the same amount of wins or fewer. You're replacing somebody with the same talent level as what's leaving. And the only other people that had one win up until that point were Tomokaze and Mitoryu. Exactly. Well, such a depressing situation. So <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Let's go, Gonoyama. You can uh, really lose it up. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, and Gonoyama as a chump is like not a terrible pick, but like it's not great. It's, it's on the same great. ground as everybody else's chump, so it's not going to gain yeah. any ground that Flarek needs to catch Jake or I for third or second place. Yeah. And and me and Ryan are both just kind of like, we're just kind of middling for both. Like, yeah. I've got Koto Zakura as a champ, and like I said, I do believe he's got a very good chance at the U show, so like, maybe I can catch up if Ono Sato completely falls apart for Mac. Maybe I can mm -hmm. swoop in at the end with some U show bonus points, but like, it's about as locked up as it ever has been at halfway that yeah. Max going to win and Flarek's <laughs> yeah, going like, to lose. <laughs> yep. So we'll figure out a good punishment for Flarek that we know he'll be able to pull off for the next Basho. <laughs> yeah. We got to do something that like doesn't require work in between uh, Basho. We got to do something that's like a live punishment, like, you know, make him say stupid stuff or. Uh... Flarek, how do you feel about the Carolina Reaper pepper? Ooh, we haven't had a spicy <laughs> challenge in a while. <laughs> I I I hate it. I'll Perfect. Say I hate it. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Noted. I mean, I, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically. Theoretically. Yeah, information Theoretically. Information could come in course, useful. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no reason that information could ever be used against you. All right, let's move into the lightning <laughs> round. Jake, who has impressed you the most so far? Oh no, Sato. Duh. Yeah. Mac. Tambien. Flarek. Uh Ono Sato's been fantastic. Yeah. I'll yeah. go with him. <laughs> Obviously Ono Sato, but Takara Fuji, 701. Like <laughs> who saw that coming? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um uh who has disappointed you the most so far, Mac? Mm, I don't want to pick on the guys that are injured. That seems like the low hanging fruit. So I'm gonna go with a Tommy Fuji. Yeah. Come on, baby. Get your shit together. Yeah. Flarek, what about you? Oh, uh, come back to me. All right. I had two people on my list. One of them was the Tommy Fuji. The other one's the injured Kirishima. God <laughs> damn it. That sucks. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like, don't do the injured guys. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, but it is the injuries are disappointing. And I know when it happens to uh, Ozeki that was so close to Yokozuna just two boshes ago, it's really, really disappointing. What about you, Jake? Anybody else? Uh, same exact thing as you. Kirishima of the guys that got injured. Kirishima is the guy that. It came in with the biggest expectations. I just want him to be a consistent good Ozeki like he was a consistent yeah. good Sekiwake, you know? If he drops to Sekiwake and, like, doesn't get 10, does he revert back to Kiribayama? Oh, <laughs> damn. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Flair, you got anybody else? It, uh, definitely Kirishima. Uh, yeah, it's so sad. I like also like Ozeki to do well. And, like, it's he's in danger of losing Ozeki, which is sad. Yeah. Uh. 
I'm no, I'm not going to start with Flarek for favorite match of the Basho. He never has that keyed up. So I will start with my Flarek, favorite. work on your favorite match. Actually, of the favorite match. Oh, match I'm so sorry. Adam, what the hell, man? <laughs> What's your favorite match of the Basho? It's got to be a day four Hoshoryu versus Hiro the Umi for exactly one reason, which was uh, during the time the Gyoji uh, Shinosuke ah. got knocked down twice. <laughs> and at the very end, like it was also, I, I think, a pretty exciting match too. But at the very end, the, the Gyoji was down the ground and like he got up and he just like defiantly, strongly pointed like one direction uh, towards, I'm pretty sure, against Hoshoryu. And I just like yeah. loved it. Of of the times, like he's not always been the most on point uh, Gyoji, but that day he was on point. He knew it his duty. It only would have been funnier if he was also wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fell down twice. Maybe maybe get a little bit of like crushed by the wrestlers, but then also getting the ruling wrong would have just been that way. No, yeah. he won. <laughs> yeah, points to the north or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the complete <laughs> He's wrong ninety direction. degrees off. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap. Um, I, I'm tempted to say Koto Zakura versus Oho is my favorite match of the Basho, uh, but I'm gonna go with Shona Naumi versus Nishiki Fuji. This was a good belt battle between these two, but the way that it ended, where both of them were near the Tawara, and then we. Love cheeky moves in sumo and Shona Naumi kicked up Nishiki Fuji's leg that was like bearing all of his weight, keeping him from going past the Tawara. So he kicked up his leg so that that momentum just took Nishiki Fuji over and landed him outside the doyo. I love that cheeky kick by Shona Naumi. Love that match. We love cheeks. In we this love podcast. cheeks. We love cheeks. Very, very cheeks. pro cheek podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm tempted to say Hoshoryu versus Hirodumi because not only was it good comedy, but it was also a very crazy, wild, fun fight. Mm-hmm. I'm tempted to say Takiyasu versus Wakamoto Haru because that, that was, was definitely the best match of the Basho. However, <laughs> I am going to pick uh, Churanomi versus Roga because I think both guys did multiple spins and it was just oh, a yeah. slapstick <laughs> garbage match and I loved it. Yep. Uh, sorry, uh, Churanomi, Roga, day six. Okay. For me, I got to go with Midori Fuji, Tamawashi, day eight. I love when he could pull off that Katasukashi and it mm-hmm. looked like Tamawashi was going to completely overpower him, but Midori Fuji stayed strong. Little boy sumo able to hold out and then just be like nope and manage to get the right position and what i i love watching midori fuji fight i always root for him it doesn't always go his way but i'm like i like him (laughs) yep um most exciting potential matchup uh i think it's my turn uh ono sato versus hoshoryu um i think that's the the best shot of ono sato dropping a match for the rest of the tournament so i i gotta say that one uh, what about you, Jake? Uh, Hoshoryu versus Ono Sato and also Koto Zakura. Um, mm-hmm. Same deal. Yeah. Uh, and has he faced... And he has faced Daesho. So, like, among those four, any of the remaining matches of those four is definitely what I'm looking forward to the most. I'm uh, with you, Jake. Uh, all those top <laughs> those top matches are the ones... I think they're going to be the hardest ones for Ono Sato. And Ozeki versus Ozeki is always a fun time. Yeah, but you, and, and you to hope be frank, anyway. And, and and to be frank, I kind of want this one to be over. I, I just need these <laughs> top guys to face each other because like, the madness, like this, this isn't fun madness the way some tournaments are. This one is kind of frustrating madness. <laughs> really? I think I, I think, think so. Ono Sato. That part's in. fun, of course. I agree. Yeah. But I think that it's yeah. I don't know. To me, this is the frustrating type of unpredictable. Other than the Ono Sato storyline, which I am rooting for, but like, yeah, this I'm, this Basha is I mean, just a bummer <laughs> beyond the the injury portion of it t- looking at our sanyaku rikshi all of them are within two wins of the yusho lead and looking at like the zone of death uh there's two rikshi with winning records daisho and ura everybody else has a losing record so like it's not crazy out of the league of a regular basho I th- I, but i do agree the injuries do take quite a bit of wind out of the sails and just the lack of sanyaku rikshi that we have really kind of takes things out of it we still got two ozeki like we have no zeki we have a komasubi we have a sekiwake we should be we happy have... there was a time when we it was should be a happy K show <laughs> yeah we we have like a bajillion ozeki i think that's part of the reason why it feels like we have so little because we're used to like 10 of them <laughs> facing off against each other 
but it's uh but yeah we still have some sanyaku that we are up we've there got four we've got four flair you, yeah. you can't you can't turn that around into trying to make that he's doing his best thing. He's the, trying. And, and the other thing is like the the cinderella maigashira that we have is takara fuji and that doesn't feel like uh that's not a sexy pick right uh, <laughs> oh, i mean oh, lower, body, for lower body notwithstanding <laughs> lower body notwithstanding it's not like um Midori Fuji, if you switch their records or something, that's a fun storyline. That that we could got, be cool. You we know, got Ura one back. That's and yeah. I mean that's there, but like yeah, to me it yeah. just it feels less compelling than yeah a I, lot of I, other like halfway points. I, I'm trying to turn you around on it, but I cannot blame you for being down on this Basha. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, I definitely am. I don't. I I definitely have seen the more exciting uh, storylines on this. Yeah. Unless so, like, this that's sad that everyone kind of pulled out. Yeah. But Takara Fuji, like, he's, like, probably at the end of his career. Like, you know, if he yeah. gets, like, a U show, like, now, that's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. I, I am trying to reconcile with myself <laughs> yeah. how I would feel yeah. with a Takara Fuji U show. Is it um, good? And then immediately goes Zintai. <laughs> I'm debating it. Ooh, I would love that. If he U showed mm -hmm. and left, I would yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Wait, what, what, again, what, what more would you need? <laughs> No, well, you, know I, how I think, I, you know how I feel about the Maigashira U shows, unless you're Takeru Fuji with the historic nature of it. But yeah, it's not really Fuji like a long term storyline. Career, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's well, like I mean, a, it's, it's like a like bookends to a storyline, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the youngest and, and oldest, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it builds up the Isekahama, like Ichiman stable, like also mm -hmm. less of the Ichiman but the stable. Anymore. They don't need it anymore. Thing. They're fine. <laughs> They're becoming the powerhouse. They're doing all right. It will build up like the hating them, like kind of think there's <laughs> the stuff here. <laughs> yeah, there's stuff here. No, I think, and and I I don't mean to be too negative, like especially if this is like your first your first Basho watching or 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 like your first year watching Sumo or something like that. There's there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's you know breaks your heart and all that. Sumo is like the it's my favorite sport. It's it's cool on all levels. But like at the same time, we've been doing this for. You, you know, a, a number of years. And I think it's it's also at the same time fair <laughs> to admit that some Basho are more exciting than others. And to me, this one is this one is. Yeah, it's it's just not as not as much fun. It's not as compelling. But yeah. it is. It, I'm obviously I'm still invested. There's still cool storylines. But yeah, it's 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 lower on the lower on the ranking list than than some others have been. Yeah. To Jake's point, like we Odo Sato, like his rise and he could very easily not easily but he could very likely win the you show here but it, it, it's kind of like oh no sato but the sanyaku are all injured yeah he fought tater no fuji and kirishima but did he really fight tater no fuji and kirishima they both pulled yeah. out shortly after so even with the ono sato you can kind of like butt that away uh that being said who's gonna win the basho jake Oh yeah, let's finish up our lightning round. <laughs> um, I said it before; I'll stick with it. Uh, it's between Daisho, Ono Sato, Koto Zakura. I give the slight edge to Koto Zakura. Mac, Ono Sato, Cleric. I'm bored. The Ono Sato hype train. Let's go. Ono Sato, <laughs> twenty you show minimum starting here. <laughs> All right, uh, Jake, you've got a couple of fun notes before we wrap up this midway episode. Oh yeah. Um, so there is a guy in the lower divisions. This is the entire fact. His name is Shotaimu, which <laughs> that's just awesome. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> I heard about that on the Salt City Discord, and it's like, wait, like, like that's actually his the name. That's not actually his name. name. <laughs> no, it's it's Showtime. Yeah, let's. That's Sweet. awesome. Showtime um, and uh, Michael, Mikiru, Mikiru. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh man, I love I I, I love Shikona. Um, I, I just that's the up. whole fun fact. That's it. That's the end. I just his name up, is Showtime. <laughs> I just looked up Showtime uh, to see what his record was, and he he's one in three this Basho. Very unfortunate. But one of the, the person he beat is one of the longest Shikonas I've seen. Naniwa Musashi. Naniwa Musashi. Yeah. Like Six her. syllables is kind of the cap. Yeah. Yeah. I've been uh, looking for like anybody that exceeds six syllables and I have not found that. I'm wondering if there's like a hard and fast rule. You can't go past six syllables. <laughs> yeah. And, and the number of kanji has almost nothing to do with the number of syllables. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Kageyaki, one kanji. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, okay, other one is uh, Rendaku. So we got an email from our listener, Brian. Thanks for sending this in. Um, uh, Koto Zakura, his new Shikona. If you were to look at the two kanji in his name, the second kanji is Sakura, like cherry blossom. Um, so why isn't his name Koto Sakura? Uh, and this is due to a, uh, a tendency in the Japanese language that's called Rendaku, uh, where you kind of soften the consonant of uh, the second part of a compound word. Um, so if it was on its own, you've got the kanji for Koto, you've got the kanji for Sakura, but you put them together, it's Koto Zakura. You kind of soften that S into a Z. That uh, that language quirk is called Rendaku. The the other time that you probably have seen this most often is with the word Heya. Uh, the H softens into a B, so if you're just saying that Heya is called Isegahama. However, if you are referring to it as a proper noun, a compound word, they are Isegahama Beya. So uh, that's that's one. If you if you have trouble dis- determining between Heya and Beya, which one you should use, only use Beya, only use the B if it's part of a compound word. If you're using Heya on its own, it is always the H. Yeah. Hey, which Heya do you want to go to? Let's go to Miyagino Beya. Exactly. There you there go. You go. Yeah. Uh, real quick note: something I had no idea before I saw this. I don't know how we've missed this. This is Koto Zakura's third Shikona. He started off as Koto Kamatani. <laughs> Wait, Six what? Syllables. Yeah, I Koto Kamatani, and that is a he held that until he hit Jurio. When he hit Jurio, he switched it to Koto Nowaka, his father's Shikona. And then when he hit Ozeki, Koto Zakura, his grandfather's Shikona. Oh, wow. Kamatani is his his uh, real last name. Yeah. So he just put Koto uh, in front uh, of it. <laughs> <laughs> so he wrestled under basically his name, his dad's name, his grandfather's name. Neat. Yeah. That is very neat. All right. Thank you for listening, Grand Sumo Breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> Throw yourself high. Keep moving forward. I, I, I love that. We're just going to end on like, here's a couple things that are neat. All right, yeah. bye. Bye. I got, I got nothing else. <laughs> no, that's fair. <laughs> I guess we'll see everybody on the 26th.